Hey guys, this is a bit different kind of video for me, but I thought it would be fun. I wanted to compare the Yeti 30 ounce tumbler to the Ozark Trail 30 ounce tumbler. See the Yeti on the left, Ozark Trail on the right. And I wanted to make the comparison using actual thermodynamic principles instead of a lot of the reviews that I saw on them. People just putting ice in them and seeing how long it, uh, how long the ice actually lasts. Um, I, I tried to make it quite a bit more accurate. The first thing I wanted to show you here is that these two tumblers are not actually the same tumbler you see here it says 363.9 grams uh, when comparing that to the ozark trail you'll see the ozark trail is quite a bit more uh, 410 uh, almost even 410.1 so these in fact are not the same tumbler and i'll be showing some of the performance differences um, you can you can kind of feel in the ozark trail that it's a bit thicker on the inside maybe that's why it weighs a little bit more but works out to be 10, 12% more weight on the Ozark Trail. So in order to perform the test, I created a saltwater solution, um, and then I measured out into each one of the tumblers approximately 15 ounces by weight. Um, this is a, an approximation here uh, based on the specific gravity of the solution. However, uh, the, the point to take away from here is that I have exactly the same mass in both. Uh, whether it's exactly 15 ounces or not um, in fact i believe it's about 14.9 ounces into both uh, but again it's the same exact weight into both tumblers you'll see that i, I get it down to the tenth of a gram the reason i chose salt water for this test is because water by itself has a pretty high specific heat and i wanted to try to lower that some uh, the the lower the specific heat of the solution the more the difference between the two tumblers is amplified when we uh, when we see the test later on. We'll be measuring the temperature change between the solution uh, of both. Uh, in this case, I also wanted to be able to get the solution to below freezing temperature without it freezing. Uh, the, the difficulty in measuring ice in a tumbler is that you don't know exactly what the mass of the ice is compared to the, uh, to the water. Uh, also, you don't get a uniform temperature within the ice compared to the water, so I needed to try to control for that. I didn't want to have to make any assumptions on the temperature at the core of the ice to the temperature at the surface of the ice um, and, and, and other, you know, other things of that nature. So in this case, I'm trying to get the exact same uh, weight or exact same mass here uh, in, in both tumblers, and you'll see I, I, I achieved that. Uh, eventually by adding uh, you know one drop at a time to the solutions the other thing to note here is that i'm using the exact same solution so the specific heat for both is exactly the same the issue with a lot of uh, a lot of the other comparisons that i saw is that people would fill up both tumblers with ice but they don't account for the fact that ice is shaped differently. Uh, it, it doesn't, the, the cubes are gonna sit in the tumblers uh, a different amount. So you're actually changing the amount of energy that you have in both of them uh, because you're not accounting for the exact mass. It's pretty difficult to do with ice. That's why I chose to do it with a, a solution of salt water that's, that's below freezing temperature instead of ice. So in order to prepare the solutions for the experiment, I took both of the tumblers and I put them in my freezer uh, overnight. I found that it actually took a long time for the temperatures to drop in these. Uh, as you can imagine, both of these are high performing tumblers. So just because it was cold in the freezer didn't mean that uh, both solutions were gonna drop temperature um, at the same rate. So I actually left them overnight so that both of them could equalize. And then I, I set them outside. Now I live in South Florida so uh, as you can see, it, it, it's pretty hot. I left them outside for uh, four and a half hours, uh, basically starting at about 7.30, 8, 8 o'clock in the morning, and, uh, and waited four, four and a half hours. I measured the initial temperatures in the beginning and then at the end <clears throat> so that I could apply the proper equation to it. And I'll, I'll go through that a little bit with you guys now so you can see what I'm doing. So this is the thermodynamic equation that relates change in temperature to uh, energy transferred in a, in a solution or any kind of mass. Uh, Q is the energy transferred. So uh, that's the total energy difference between an initial state and uh, the state, the, the next state when you're measuring. C is a specific heat constant. Uh, in this case, we use the same exact saline solution for both. 
So um, those will actually cancel out in, in the future. Mass, again, you saw me weigh both of the uh, solutions and they're exactly the same. Both of those will cancel as well. And then the delta T is the temperature change from the initial to uh, when we measured at the end of the test. So you, you'll see how we relate those two here in a second. So now we rearrange the equations for both of the tumblers and uh, we set them equal to each other in order to see the uh, the efficiency difference between the two. That's the uh, one plus X term that I added here. You'll see uh, that the delta T1 and delta T2, that's the change in temperatures of both tumblers. The difference in the two tumblers that I measured was uh, 28.2 degrees for the Yeti and 23.5 degrees total change from initial to uh, the end of the four and a half hours. And then the one plus X is gonna show uh, the efficiency difference. When you solve for X, you get 0.2 and essentially that translates to a 20% higher efficiency, which is kind of surprising. Uh, the Ozark Trail being at about a $10 tumbler was 20% more efficient in, um, in insulating the solution inside than was the uh, you know, $40 uh, Yeti tumbler. It may be important to note here that the Ozark Trail tumbler started at 21.6 degrees Fahrenheit and the Yeti started at 19.1 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see the change in the two temperatures there. I'd be interested to see any other results of uh, anybody else doing any tests like this. Um, these results are pretty surprising to me.